What up, y'all? We're doing a book haul, baby. Did you have that planned? <laughs> Not at all. That was a spontaneous combustion of my character. Anyway, uh, we don't have too many books today, but we got a, a, a fair share of books. Yeah. Well, we've done, we've, we've been, been putting couple, this off for like four weeks now. Dude, book hauls are tough, man. They just take so long in, for, in every way. They take Editing, except for getting filming. books. We get books pretty quickly, but yeah. it takes forever to record, to do the recording, to edit the recording, to upload the recording. Basically, after we get the book, every step is a process, right? That's how I feel. I don't even remember what books we already hauled. I think we've already read some of these books we that have. we've hauled. Yeah. And then we also have, uh, yeah, so I, let's get started. I mean, wait, do we have anything? You know what we haven't been doing? I'll tell you at the end of the video. Um, do we have any 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 housekeeping to take care of? Um, it all depends on when this is going up. True. Um, <laughs> I was going to say the book club, but... Yeah, so we do a book club every month. If you guys want to join that book club, um, it just follow, find it on the thing. See what the next book club is going to be for we the following month. We always talk about it in the wrap-up and the TBR yeah. every month. Yeah. But... If this goes up by the end of July, it's going to be sort of Kaigen, and I think we're doing... But at this point, it's going to be too late, so read the next one that we're going to read. It's fun. We're always looking for more people on there. People are lazy and never want to read books, but if you're watching this, I'm assuming you like to read books. Mm -hmm. Maybe you already even already read it. If you already read it, that's even better because... You probably either like it or have an opinion about it. Having a strong opinion is always nice. Even anyway, a bad one. Let's get to the um, thing. My eyes are super itchy, guys, so I'm going to be itching them a lot today. I'm sorry. Do you have, like, allergies? Uh, no, <laughs> except for I have, I'm allergic to one thing. Me? And I live with her. The Actual Star, a novel. So I got this arc they randomly asked me if I wanted it, and it sounded pretty cool. It's a big book, though. I heard about that. Did you tell me about that the other day? Is that like our next book or no, something? No, 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 no. Okay. We can't read this. It's not out yet. Oh, my bad. September. My bad. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry I spoke. <laughs> Takes readers on a journey over two millennia and six continents, telling three powerful tales a thousand years apart, all of them converging in the same cave in the Belizean jungle. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Meek. I believe in you. So it's about uh, teenage twins and a young American woman and someone else. I don't know. Three oh. three generations of people that all end up like in the same place but a thousand years apart. Something like that. Sounded interesting. I think it's a sci-fi book. Uh, I, I may just be basing that purely off of the cover. But it sounded pretty cool. Are you okay? I'm trying to understand this picture of like what it is. It's the actual star. What? No, I don't know. So in each era, a reincarnated trinity of souls. What, what is this? Like the Zelda? Matrix? Oh, yeah. Navigates I mean, the entanglements of tradition and progress, sister and stranger and love and hate. Until all of their age old questions about the nature of existence converge deep underground where only the complete darkness can they truly see. What? That's too complicated. Uh, I got lost at, Mind the, blown. at the Trinity part. Anyway, then I'm super excited. My Contrary oh, Mary. Oh, Contrary Mary. Nice. So they apparently got off of like the Lady Janies thing. Well, I'm still always going to call them the Lady Janies. I mean, let's be real. Who? The, the authors? three authors. Why are they're they They're not Janes? Janes, but they write about Jane, but now they're going on to Mary's. Oh. This naked. What is the Contrary Mary about? Does it really matter? Because they're just awesome writers. Yeah, no. I'll read it. They're always like, it seems like they're historical characters. Yeah, they historical are. They're people always people in history. That, but they like, they take a spin on the story and like kind of sometimes make it a little bit fantasy, a little bit. Well, My Plain Jane was about a fiction, not a, well, a fictional book, but it, it was like not real. Oh, it was really? It based on a book. Okay. Um, My Lady Jane was based off of like history. Okay. My Calamity Jane, I think is also, but we haven't read that one yet. Okay. Any so there's four now. This is the fourth. Yes. Nice. We still need to read the other one. Also, we've only read two, so we've only seen one crossover-ish yeah. type thing. I don't know how they're going to cross over my calamity Easter game. egg type thing. Hopefully they do in some way. Maybe like they'll they'll like find a book or something and it has <laughs> yeah, yeah, like okay. somebody from it, you know, like that'd be cool. Um, Mary is ready to reign. 
She's the queen of Scotland and the jewel of the French court, except when she's a mouse. Yes, reader, Mary is an Edian shapeshifter in a kingdom where verities rule. I feel like they already did this. So this is... It's the same family, though. A small obstacle, to be sure, hmm. but one that could cost her a head or a tail. Francis is Mary's betrothed and next in line for the French throne. But what used to be a pleasant, a pleasantly far-off prospect is suddenly too close for comfort. You see, he has a secret of his own. No matter how much he loves Mary, a king is the last thing he wants to be. And then there's Ari... A daughter of Nostradamus, the world's greatest seer, a position as one of Mary's ladies-in-waiting seems to uh, like the perfect opportunity to prove herself worthy of her father's legacy. She never predicted that she'd stumble upon the kingdom's mousiest secret. <laughs> <laughs> I just love these authors so much. I know, like... Do people not like them? Not everyone. I feel like people well, don't wrong. give them a chance because they're historical fiction and like a lot of people don't like historical fiction but they're great because they completely rip apart history and just do their own thing and just say screw it we're just gonna take these people from history and do whatever we want with them so that's what makes it fun i like it but yeah so they're, they're that whole animal thing was in one of the other books so My they're same lady. keeping it in the same universe baby my lady jane the yeah. first one Oh, I got this arc, Summer Suns. I think this cover is like really cool. It's like a weird hand and a regular hand. Like is it a weird hand? Up. It looks like a wooden yeah, made it's like of a tree. Skeleton. Oh, it's a skeleton hand. Never tree. mind. Um, comes out when? September. One part of the sound and fury. No, wait. That's not. Wait. That's not. No. What is happening? Figure it out. Andrew and Eddie did everything together. Best friends bonded more deeply than brothers until Eddie left Andrew behind to start his graduate program at Vanderbilt. Six months later, only days before Andrew was to join him in Nashville, Eddie dies of an apparent suicide. He leaves Andrew a horrible inheritance, a roommate he doesn't know, friends he never asked for, and a gruesome phantom that hungers for him. I don't know. I think it sounds fun. Yeah, sounds and not weird. fun. That's a bad way to put it, but interesting. Oh, oh, who's hitting microphones? Well, it doesn't Mister, matter because we had not, a that's huge gonna be cut fight. Out. That's going to be cut out. Then this author kindly sent me this Dreams of the Dying book. It looks book. like a video game. So it's based off of a video oh game. Oh, my God. I'm so smart. I guess this author writes for the video game Enderall. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Enderall. Is it like an MMO or so something? So he lives in Germany, I believe, and he sent this to me. Yes. Came out in 2016. Single player video game. Cool. So he writes for this. I personally love that the inside matches the outside. So like the dust jacket is literally just, just a dust jacket. My favorite. I love when uh, books have that. This says, oh my God, this book is enormous too. I didn't think it would be this. Oh, look, there's pictures. Oh, I love pictures. Ooh. More books should have pictures. It's got a lot of pictures and, and illustrations. Stuff in I don't know if you can see like it. Like when they describe something, they should like have pictures. Have of a it. picture of it sometimes. When it's like a confu like a chult or whatever. Oh, this is going to be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When it's like a chult, is that what they're called? Dude. Okay, you're gonna, she's not listening to me. She's just agreeing with me to get me to shut Literally, up. Literally, like 60. See, I told you she was. There's like a hundred pages in the back. They're just like glossaries and pictures and stuff. That's nuts. This book is 700 pages. But it says, you can't run from your own mind. Years after the harrowing war experience, ex-mercenary Jesper Delveric has taken to drifting. It's a lonely existence, but, bar but barring the occasional bout of melancholia, he's found the closest thing to peace a man like him deserves. Life is all right. Or so he tells himself, hoping to turn the page, Jesper accepts a mysterious invitation into the beautiful but dangerous archipelago of Calais, and everything changes. Plagued by boiling social tensions and terrorism, the tropical empire is edging ever closer to civil war. Calais' merchant king may be the only one able to prevent this catastrophe, but he's fallen into a preternatural coma, and it, ju it is Jesper's job to figure out who or what caused it. As the investigation takes him across the archipelago and into the king's nightmares, unexpected events not only tie Jesper's own life to the mystery, but also unearth inner, de inner demons he believed to be long exercised. Why do you keep looking at me like that? You kept like... 
I wasn't looking at you at all. I, I was like, like, that, like a, I, think I was looking forward the like whole time. Really cool. It makes like on here it doesn't look like it, but in the camera it looks like this like pops in the center. I don't know if there's an audio book for you though. So that's sad. Then we have these two very exciting books. I was smiling at them before. Oh, I was like, hey. so that's why you were happy. Any way the wind blows. Any we were way the wind blows. Supposed to read this in July. I don't think it's going to happen because you still haven't even started Sword of Kaigen. I thought the our book club book was a different book. <laughs> so I started reading a different book. So you haven't started it yet and it's pretty long and I just started it yesterday. So this may have to be an August book, but obviously the third book in Carry On. And th hold this. Then they re-released the hardcover of Carry On with these new art types. So I got this. So now I have all three hardcovers that all match, and they're beautiful. I love this cover. That's your favorite one? I think so. What about you? You liked the second one, I think, the yellow one. I like the contrast of that one, yeah. Like, it was like a nice, like pop oh i didn't look at the naked oh yeah Ooh. oh they have nice inner things too the Ooh. back is different is the back different no the back's the same look how cool that is what does it say watford waterford. oh yeah Wat watford not waterford and then this has a a flying goat uh -huh. a flying goat these are cool I'm, now i'm very curious about these flying goats <laughs> they're obviously going to be a thing right that is book three. We haven't met flying goats yet. Then I got this pocket edition of Legend by Marie Lu. I've always wanted to try one of these like small editions. Um, this book was all right. Don't hate me, T. I know she loves this series and she still wants me to read book two. So I might read book two still. But I need a refresher on what happened in this one. I read it in like April or May. And so why do you need a refresher? I, I feel like it's you just kind read of it. forgettable, <laughs> unfortunately. Like it, I, I don't know. I'm willing to give it a shot, though, because she says the second book is good. So we'll see. Um, I don't own it yet. I'm already bored. Yeah. I'm already, I yawned. There you I'm go. already bored. What did I do with this? Eat it? Then we also randomly brought up a bunch of books from downstairs. Like, if you don't know, we have like a trove of books downstairs from like my house before we moved here and I've never brought them up and I have some books here this is like the third book in a Warcraft series Those like pages are so yellow this is Jeff's oh <laughs> he like so we have a friend that was going to throw away a bunch of books and we were like hey you can't throw those away give them to us and I didn't realize that this is book three I haven't read this um and I need to apparently either find book one and two I'm guessing he gave them to us or I need to buy them because I don't own them so we'll have to look in the basement and see if they're there. We have more of his books, so that it might be there. I then did a book outlet order. Um, so I'm slowly going to try to make my way through... Um, Downtown? Stephen King's books. Oh, that's a terrible it's idea. It's going to take a long time. I don't like this idea, man. <laughs> but... Um, as I see them like really cheap, I'll probably pick them up, which is why I got this later by Stephen King. This one was on Book Outlet for like a few dollars, I think. Um, it says, the son of a strungle strungling, struggling <laughs> single mother, Jamie Conklin, just wants an ordinary childhood. But Jamie is no ordinary child. Born with an unnatural ability, his mom urges him to keep secret. Jamie can see what no one else can and learn what no one else can learn. But the cost of using his ability is higher than Jamie can imagine. Jamie. 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 I think he can, like, see ghosts or something. You know, I was thinking Jamie Tart in my head. Jamie Tart. Do, do. So, yeah, this is a... Uh, I've heard this book is pretty good. <laughs> the whole time you were reading that, I was thinking Jamie Tart in my head. Yeah. And I didn't realize it until the end when you said Jamie again. I was like, Jamie. I like this cover, but like his mom is, like, super hot. Like, they Can made her, like, really sexy. I mean, she's half naked on the back, right. too. Look at the back. That's a different lady oh. in a different book, but, yeah. I just thought they were all... <laughs> this is a weird book. I wasn't listening to how you got this. How did you get it? <laughs> you said this? Book outlet. Oh. So you paid for this? It was, like, a few dollars. Why would you pay for this? Because it's a Stephen King book. Oh, it is? My God, you really weren't Yo, listening. It says Stephen King <laughs> real big right in the middle. <laughs> like, real big. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is a part. It's part of like a. a Wait, mini... did you think I was lying when I said I wasn't listening? You <laughs> I didn't that know was... it went that far back. <laughs> that was a joke. You said I was like, "Hey, this is later by Stephen King." You like instantly shut down. That was before the Jamie Tart situation. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know what's happening to me. Um, that but was he crazy. did like a mini series of this. Like they're called like hard case crime series. There's three books in it so far. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> Oh Whoopsies. no! You almost <laughs> then I also got in book outlet the return by Rachel Harrison. I just love this pink. It's super cool. I forget what it this is about. It looks three D. Look at that. It's like boom. Woo. A group of friends reunite after one of them is returned from a mysterious two year disappearance in this haunting debut novel. Julie is missing, and no one believes she will ever return except Elise. Elise knows Julie better than anyone and feels it in her bones that her best friend is out there and that one day she'll come back. She's right. Two years to the day that Julie went missing, she reappears with no memory of where she's been or what happened to her. I feel like this is a huge trope. And I own like several books with this trope in it of like people leaving return. and return There's and they show. don't remember. There's like two shows about it. And I never read them. Like I haven't read any of them yet. Along with Molly and May, their two closest friends from college, the women decide to reunite at a remote inn. But the second Elise sees Julie, she knows something's wrong. She's emaciated with sallow skin and odd and an odd appetite. Ooh. I don't want to know anymore. It seems cool. What if it means she's like a vampire or a zombie or oh, something? Oh, I was like, where did the appetite thing make it interesting? <laughs> it's like, she's not hungry. It's like, oh, she's not hungry. I'm probably... I see. Mm, vampire. What? You just jumped to the conclusion yeah, of vampire? I'm probably making it something like way cooler Maybe than she's an is. alien now because she doesn't want to eat. Fun fact, if you hair dry stickers, they usually come off, but you can't hair dry them too much because then you'll like stick it even more on there. Stickity stick. But just... Dry it a little bit, the hair dryer, and it peels off. Um, I got this also on Book Outlet, Bentley Little, The Haunted. Julian and Claire Perry and their two children, Megan and James, have made the move to a bigger, nicer home in the city's historic district. But something isn't right. The neighbors seem reluctant to visit. Claire can't shake the feeling that someone's watching her. Megan receives increasingly menacing and obscene texts. And Jamie's having terrible dreams. Jamie. Ja James, I mean. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> it's not even Jamie. It's James. Oh, no wonder, considering that he's, see he's seen in the corner of the basement staring at him. No wonder, considering what he has seen in the corner of the basement staring at him. Got it. It would have so been creepier if he saw himself staring yeah, at him. Yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. I'm like, wait, I read something wrong. This seems like a horror book. I always, like want horror books to be like true horror and i never actually get scared so i keep buying books hoping that they'll creep me out so let me know if you read this and if it's creepy i think someone in my discord read it and said it was creepy i just got this one in the mail the other day the other day it was a wire it wasn't the microphone okay i just got this one in the mail the other day the other day comes out september 28th i believe um the Seven Visitations of Sidney Burgess. You know that cover reminds me of? That the patient one? A silent the, patient? Yeah, just like... Oh, my this. God. I didn't see the face. Really, Meek? Really, well, Meek? Uh, plus, when you're looking at it like this, you don't see it that well. No, you don't. It looks very creepy up close. Like, like it, it's, it's creepy. Terrible. It's really I weird because it. I know an Andy Marino in real life, so I, I'm like, I keep looking at this. All right. Nine years ago, Sidney Burgess got clean to make a better life for her son. Now in the aftermath of a violent confrontation, her old urges are back, speaking to her in a new voice, and the language they whisper is captivating. As she picks through her fragmented memories of a home invasion, the secrets she uncovers threaten to upend her carefully constructed life. At the same time, the whispering of her reckless urges takes on a shocking new form with dark cravings of its own. I don't remember... What I read about this book, I did ask for this book, but something about it made me want to read it. I think it's like a thriller, but. Oh, yeah. You were like into those thrillers for a while. Remember? I still am. I, I'm still waiting to <laughs> read one that just like grips me. Like everyone seems to be super into thrillers and they never like totally grip me like because normal. If you're more of a visual thriller. You know what I'm saying? You're thrilling in real life, but. In, on written word, you're not at that thrilling. I don't get Does it. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> um, 
I'm super excited for the final girl support group, Grady Hendrix's next book. He's quickly, um, for no reason really, become one of my favorite new authors. He, what did he write? He what wrote else? the My Best Friend's Exorcism. Best Friend's Exorcism. He wrote um, We Sold Our Souls, which wasn't one of my favorites. Who wrote? But then he also wrote The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. That's what I was going to ask. Who wrote that? Because really I really like that book. That's the only so, one of those that I read, I think. I would say I've read three out of his five books because, no, wait. I think the only book I haven't read is the, um, well, there's a, a book about, like, paperbacks from hell, which I, I want to get eventually. And then I haven't read the horror store book yet. Um, and then this one. So I think there's only three that I have to read by him to fully catch up. But this one literally just came out. It says, a fast-paced, thrilling horror novel. We'll see. That follows a group of heroines to die for. I would really also find very interesting about him is he's a male author that writes, I think, Primarily. only in female yeah. like characters. And I think he does a good job. Like At least in My Best Friend's Exorcism, he did an awesome job. Um, in horror movies, the final girl is the one who's left standing when the credits roll. The one who fought back, defeated the killer, and avenged her friends. The one who emerges bloodied but victorious. But after the sirens fade and the audience moves on, what happens to her? Lynette Tarkington is a real-life final girl who survived a massacre 22 years ago, and it has defined every day of her life since, and she's not alone. For more than a decade, she's been meeting with five other actual final girls and their therapists in a support group for those who survived the unthinkable, putting their lives back together piece by piece. That is until one of the women misses a meeting and Lynette's worst fears are realized. Someone knows about the group and is determined to take their lives apart again piece by piece. Interesting. I wish I had I, I didn't have that uh, I information. I feel like that wait that that ruins the first couple chapters. They should just re start removing chapters from books because like the first two couple chapters because they just tell us what happens. I know. At the beginning or the the synopsis. I was thinking about making this the I wish I wasn't listening for that one. I wish you had said Jamie. <laughs> So I could just like zone out. Um, I think I, I'm going to make this August book club book. August. I, All I right. really want to read it. And uh, yeah, so I think this is going to be August. And I like Grady Hendrix a lot. Then we have Carrie by Stephen King. Carrie, more Stephen King. So this is the very first book he ever published it's going to be my beginning of my journey of reading sting 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 <laughs> sting the king. king sting the king sting the king it's like branderson but i'm making sting sting oh, um St stephen king <gasps> yeah I, that's official <laughs> so sting books um i made a list yesterday and oh my god it was such an undertaking i really like that name you're welcome <laughs> um but I'll call it my sting read along. And it was 127 items long. What if we could get sting to join us? That would be impossible. No, I mean the, the, the band, the guitar guy. <laughs> he's not a, it's Wait, not a band. band. He's a guitar guy. I'm thinking of scorpion something or other. That makes sense. Reason. It starts with an S, um, I guess. The guy with the top hat. The scorpions. No, I know what you're saying. Sting. That would be even more impossible. His name I is feel. sting, right? Yeah. And then we could just throw in some more S words like seal. Let's get seal in oh there too. Oh my God. Isn't, doesn't he sing the, that Rose song that I really like? Yeah. Oh, that song's so good. It's from so... Batman. It's from Batman forever or, or Batman and Robin. I don't remember which one. This is so going to be 127 things. And now a lot of these stories are really short stories that he's written. There's like, I think 60 to 62 novels that he has. This is number one. So this is where I'm starting, and I wanted to start this in August, but we'll see how crazy my month is. I mean, the words are really big, and it's not that long of a book. It's only like 300 pages. Carrie may be picked on by her classmates, but she has a gift. She can move things with her mind. Doors lock, candles fall. This is her power and her problem. Then an act of kindness, as spontaneous as the vicious taunts of her classmates, offers Carrie a chance to be normal, until an unexpected cruelty turns her gift into a weapon of horror and destruction that no one will ever forget. I stopped listening. What? It sounds cool. So here's another thing with Stephen King. I've only read, I think, five of his books. So I've only read Carrie, and I've only read um, It, and I read those 
not Carrie, Christine. And I read them. Is that the car one? Yeah. I read them a long, long time ago, like 16 to 20 years ago. And I also read three of the Dark Tower books. And that's where I ended it. The Dark Tower. That's like they a made fantasy. the movie right out of it, but it, yeah. didn't, it didn't pick up, and like nobody really wanted to continue watching it. Um, I feel like I we've watched a lot of shows and movies though. Those are sting books. Stuff. I don't know. Those are sting books. What ones? The the tower ones. Yeah. Huh. Um, I think it's like eight books long, but I feel like we've watched a lot of shows and movies that he's written or things based off of his stuff. And I've never actually read a lot of these books. And I hear that, like, most of them are not very accurate to the book. So I'm interested to see. And some of them. And I know, like, Carrie, I didn't really love the movie. But I watched it literally when I was, like, 13. So I don't really remember it. And some of them he doesn't like, right? He hates, like, The Shining. Which is great because I didn't really like The Shining. I also hate The Shining. It was a terrible movie. F you if you like that movie. So I feel, it, Tell me I'm wrong. Explain to me in the comments why I'm wrong about that movie. I feel like I'm just not a, a Kubrick fan or whatever, I, however yeah, you say I'm his name. Yeah, I'm not a fan either. He's, and, he's uh, a movie maker, director. He, yeah. He's but one. He is. I just... I didn't like 20, 2001 A Space Odyssey slow, either. But apparently... Oh my God. That, mo- that other movie. Legit. Legit. What movie? 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh. Like it 10 is, minutes it's at a time. It's so slow. No, like it's there not are my thing. there are these classic moments just like The Shining where it's just like, "Whoa, this is super cool," you know? Like like I can see where this inspired so many things in the future. But there are so many like it's a they're long. It's a long movie too. Uh, it's like two hours too long. <laughs> There's about like 30 minutes of like cool stuff in there. I definitely feel like The Shining could have been at least an hour shorter. Yeah. So and then that scene at the end, if but you I'm haven't excited. watched it, don't worry, don't. Uh, but that scene at the end where, like, the guy's, like, frozen there. Oh, yeah. It just looked so corny. It was like a joke. I was just like, oh, I hope the book is better. I hope when you but, read it, you're like, wow, this yeah, book is actually really good. A lot good. of people say, and Stephen King himself, obviously, but a lot of people say that the book is much better and it's way different. I'm excited to read it. Uh, I'm going to kind of unofficially be going through these if you guys want to read along i know some of my discord friends are going to be joining in on the journey um so i might start this in august we'll see all right uh this is another one that i i brought up from my basement the bell jar it's a classic the basement Mm -hmm. it was like a book i've owned for a million years now and i don't know what it's about I know it's a classic, and I own it. I don't know how I got it or why I got it. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you about it because it's been around forever. Oh, okay. The the, 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 back, bell the bell jar, the back jar. It looks like she has a big dress on. Yeah. But that's the background. She actually has a... Oh, shoot. Is she has, it? She has like a skirt on. Oh, man. She has that's a skirt, weird. but the background lighting up. What, what is happening? What is happening what right is now? What is happening? I'm just going to... My bird... My board. My bird. I'm going to read synopses. My bird. And bird. Beard. You may go talk from now on. All right. I dare you. Okay. <laughs> I got frozen. You already failed. I'm not reading the synopsis oh, yet. Oh, it's just the synopsis. Dangerous Secrets. This is the story of Elsa and Anna's parents. Is it a comic book? No. I want to get the Frozen comic, the manga. Of course you do. Ooh. So if you don't know, I'm super obsessed with Frozen 1 and 2 and... This Which book, one's better? I think one is still classic and okay. my favorite. Which one's better, though? I don't know. Probably two, technically. Like, as far as, like, the story. Um, But this is about their parents, and it has really good reviews, and I just love anything Frozen, so I want to read it. And I just ruined it. You don't want to know about it. That's what, that's what it is. It's a prequel story to Frozen. <laughs> Dang, tease him like that. Why don't you? <laughs> I was just thinking. Baby. This book from Book Outlet. Did you know? The Chain. Tell us how. Um, It's got Kaivax's favorite type of cover. No, it doesn't. I'm going to rip that off it when you does. turn around. Turn around. Let me rip it <laughs> off. Um, Does it have an actual other cover on the inside? Nope. Oh, no, my. And it's not an arc. He's going to have a fit so a, a culinary what is it called coronary that one yeah i'm gonna have a culinary <laughs> a- emblem so 
I hear so many mixed things about this book, but the concept seems so cool, and I just want to like it. Where is the there? I don't. What is the dang concept? Ah. Con, g- g- the, the thing, the culinary. You just dropped off your child at the bus stop. A panicked stranger calls your phone. Your child has been kidnapped. The stranger then explains that their child also has been kidnapped, but by a completely different stranger. The only way to get your child back is to kidnap another child, and you are now part of the chain. Whoa, this got goosebumps. Why? It was creepy. I don't know. I'm just like imagining like like everybody just kidnapping each other's child. So yeah, it's like your kid gets kidnapped, but then you find out that they're only kidnapping your kid because their kid got kidnapped and like you they have yeah, that to makes do it. sense that's now the you logi- have to kidnap that's someone the logical to get next, your kid back that's the logical next step yeah. so that's it seems cool like i don't know but people have mixed feelings i'm kind of sad about it's that probably part. just written badly i hope it's probably why um then i have the three body problem this is a i think a trilogy but this is just book one i got this on book outlet as the next well. one's called the four body probably no i forget what it's called the four body probably uh oh, it's written by two people the dark forest are they bros oh yeah huh are they bros oh no it's written by this guy and translated by this guy they're bros dude i think they are they must be they have the same last they name. have the same last name which Anywho. is liu liu so I heard that this book is really, really good, but a little bit complicated. So I have to be like in the mi- the right mindset to read it. Sixen? Yeah, I think so. A secret military group sends signals into space in hopes of establishing contact with aliens and succeeds. Picking up their signal is an alien civilization on the brink of destruction who now readies to invade Earth. News of the coming invasion divides humanity like never before. Some want to help the superior beings take over a world they see as corrupt, and others prepare to fight the invasion at all costs. The three-body problem begins a groundbreaking saga of enormous scope and vision. I See, I, f- I don't know. I feel like that's a better synopsis. Because it tells you a little bit. Yeah. But not Just a like lot. Enough to like be like, oh, that sounds Dope. possibly Mago. interesting. Or I guess dope mago, like some people like to say. I picked up this book because I've heard really good things about it. Is it it dope your goat? Ew. Oh, yeah, I took off a sticker and now it's all sticky. Is that the one that you you heated up too much? I didn't. No, I just took it it off like an idiot. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. So I've actually heard some pretty good stuff about this book. I got this one on Book Outlet also. I really hope there's another character's name that is Jamie. Jamie. I, I really want there to be a Jamie in one of these books. We still got a decent amount of books. Yeah. Please give me a Jamie. All right. I'm, I'm stuck. Pretty and popular high school senior Andy Bell was murdered by her boyfriend. Uh, Jamie? His, his was name, his name was Sal. Ah. And then he killed himself. It was all anyone could talk about. And five years later, Pip sees how the tragedy still haunts her town. But she can't shake the feeling that there is more to the story. She knew Sal when she was a child, and he was always so kind to her. How could he possibly have been a killer? Now a senior herself, Pip decides to re-examine the closed case for her final project at first, just to cast doubt on the original investigation. But soon she discovers a trail of dark secrets that might actually prove Sal innocent. Blah, blah, blah. I hear it's actually really good, though. I don't usually like YA, like, thriller-type books, especially ones with high school kids, like, figuring out stuff, but... If it's done well, I feel like it sounds like a cool story. I got this one on Book Outlet also, The Lost Man by Jane Harper. That is a really beat up copy. It's like beat up everywhere. Wait, Jamie? Jane Harper. Harper. Dang. Can you call her Jamie? No. Janie. (laughs) Brothers Nathan and Bub meet for the first time in months at the remote fence line, separating their cattle ranches in the lonely outback. Their third brother, Cameron, lies dead at their feet. In an isolated belt of Queensland, Australia, their homes a three-hour drive apart. The brothers were one another's nearest neighbors. Cameron was in the... Oh, he was the middle child, the one who ran the family homestead. But something made him head out alone under the unrelenting sun. Nathan Bubb and Nathan's son return to Cameron's ranch and to those left behind by his passing, his wife, his daughters, and his mother, as well as their lifelong employee and two recently hired seasonal workers. While they grieve his loss, da 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 So what? They have to figure out who did it? Someone might have forced him into his death, into the outback, blah, blah, blah. 
I hear this book will like literally make you like anxious by the way they describe like how hot and like arid it is out there. I guarantee you it won't. You People never know. are just sensitive. Sensitive. I wanted to get this book for a long time. I also got this on Book Outlet. It's Spin by Robert Charles Wilson. I have an ebook of this. When it first came out, they had like a humble bundle or what is that called? That that's a that's a thing. I don't um, know if that's what you're trying to say. And it was like in there and we got an ebook copy of it and I just never read it. And I, I just like physical books better. Anywho, a novel of breathtaking cosmic scope. One night when he was twelve, Tyler stood in his backyard and watched the stars go out. They all flared into brilliance at once, then disappeared, replaced by a flat, empty black barrier. He and his friends Jason and Diane had seen what would become to, uh, to be known as the spin. It would shape their lives. Eventually, probes reveal uh, that their barrier is artificial, generated by huge alien artifacts. I don't want to know anymore. and I just think it sounds really cool. Mm. I got this book on Amazon Prime Day. Once upon a dream. It's a Maleficent story. You dream a dream a dreamy dream. I have a few of these One books. One day more. Um, like the Twisted Tales. Of course, I haven't read any, but they seem really cool. My left eye is watering again. What's wrong? Maybe you like have the scratched cornea like I had. Maybe your face is a scratched cornea. I'll have to give you the eye drops. It should be simple. A dragon defeated a slumbering princess in a castle, a prince poised to wake her. But when the prince falls asleep, as soon as his lips touch the fair maidens, it's clear that this fairy tale is far from over. With the desperate fairy's last curse controlling her mind, Princess Aurora must escape from a different castle of thorns and navigate a dangerously magical landscape created from her very own dreams. She isn't alone. A charming prince is eager to join on her quest, and old friends offer their help. But as Maleficent's agent follow her every move, um, agents, Aurora must discover who her true allies are and who she truly is. I just think these sound really cool. What if Sleeping Beauty never woke up? So she's going to be going through, like, a trip in her mind? Another book outlet book. I apparently got a lot of books on book outlet. Yeah. What the Woods Keep. I think this cover is really cool. Um, I think it was my birthday, so you decided that you needed to buy a bunch of stuff this past (laughs) couple months. On her 18th birthday, Hayden inherits her childhood home. And what? Inherits? Inherits. Did I say that wrong? Yeah. (laughs) On the condition that she uncover its dark secrets. Hayden tries to put her past behind her, and it worked. She's getting ready for college, living in a Brooklyn apartment, and hanging out with her best friend and roommate, Dell. But now it's all coming back to her. Her mother's mysterious disappearance a decade ago, her father's crazy theories, and Hayden's own dark dreams of strange symbols and rituals. She goes back to her hometown, blah, 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 blah. Ooh. Runic stuff, cool. But it's just not... It it looks like it says, when, what, the... Woods Keep. Oh. It's probably legit. It's not. Well, whatever. It's just made to look like it. The letters don't look that similar to the, like, American letters. You know what I mean? Yeah. They just chose letters that kind There are symbols that kind of look like the letters. And idiots like me think it's legit. You're like, oh, this is, like, runic stuff. I also got this on Book Outlet, The Oracle Year. I love these types of covers that are just the hardback and it's like printed right on the hardback and it's nice and glossy and I just love it. Um, ooh. Knowledge is power. So when an unassuming Manhattan ba- bassist named Will awakens from a dream one morning with 108 predictions about the future in his head, he rapidly finds himself the most powerful man in the world. Protecting his anonymity by calling himself the Oracle, he sets up a heavily guarded website with the help of his friend Hamza to dole out his revelation. In no time, global corporations are offering him millions for exclusive access, eager to profit from his prophecies. I don't want to know anymore. It just seemed interesting. You're not commenting at all. What do you think of this cover? Uh, the cover is fine. I like the design. I'm not a fan of the, the way that you like it. It makes it look too much like a textbook. 
I don't mind it. It's not bad because it's different than our other books, uh, but it definitely feels a little cheaper, like without a dust cover on it. Let me know what you guys think. I like it. I'm just saying. I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying it feels. This is another um, basement book. Bring up from downstairs book. Um, it's just another Dritz book. Just another. Um, slowly but surely going to make my way through the Dritz series. What number is that? I have no freaking clue. It doesn't say. It usually has like a list. Oh, it's signed? Oh, yeah. I forgot it's signed, though. It's personalized. My my parents bought this for me for Christmas one year. Signed? Or yeah. You, you, you on his website, it. you can, like, order signed and, like, personalized books. You used to be able to. Cool. Um, This is the first book in, like, a new series. So I don't know when it came out. I don't know what it is about Dritz. But I, I just don't like Dritz. It's okay. I know. I like them enough I, I for want to us. like them. I... Got this book sent to me by the publisher, and I think it is, like, so freaking cool looking. By the way, the artwork on this is really good. Is it? You don't think so? Yeah, it's all right. Okay. I love this artwork. It's, like, a Uh, maze with a house and, like, a creepy girl. And, like, this looks like it's all tattered and beat up. It's not very good. I love it. Compared to this amazing actual art, (laughs) like, somebody actually drew this. As opposed to that, looks like they took a picture of a maze, a picture of a girl, and a picture of a mansion, and layered them. This was actually art. I could make that. I just, I don't know. I think, like, the way it looks all battered and old looks really cool. I just think it looks cool. There's something about it that appeals to me. I didn't even notice that. I just thought that was ugly looking. I'm going to be honest with you. um, Just being honest, man. Can I be honest? I think this is six... Short stories or novellas. That's worse. In one. I hate that even more. I hate books like that. Oh, bite me. You don't have to read it. <laughs> Goblin seems like any other ordinary small town, but with master storyteller. The town is called Goblin? I guess. Who would live in a town called Goblin? Me, it's because like, it's dope. No, you wouldn't. It's like living in a town called You're Gonna Die. Oh, this is the author of Bird Box. Okay. These six novellas tell a story of a place where the rain is always falling, nighttime is always near, and your darkest fears and desires await. Welcome to Goblin. A man in slices. A man proves his legendary love to his girlfriend with a sacrifice even more daring than Vincent Van Gogh's and sends her more than his heart. What? I don't want to know what these little short stories are about. I just think it's a cool concept, and I think this cover is awesome. I like that cover. The next one. All right. This one just came out, and a lot of people have... Oops, I didn't hit the microphone. A lot of people have already read this, but... All right, so you can't actually tell, but, like, the cover's nice because it has this, like, nice little glow to it. You look how... See how it's like almost looks like it's glowing? Yeah. Like, it's very faint, but, like... Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Why are these eyes, like... Like... Scary looking. They're like slashes through time. Yeah. Like the, they the look like time slashes. Fabric of the Look, universe. even on the side, it's even more there. So I got this book sent to me from the publisher. It's November 1991. Nirvana's in the tape deck. George H.W. Bush is in the White House. And movie-obsessed college student Charlie Jordan is in a car with a man who might be a serial killer. So I think this all happens in one night. And there's, like, um, they're in college, I believe, and on campus someone died, and they still haven't found the killer, and they think it might be a student or something, and then she has to go out of town, and she hitches a ride with this guy that may be the killer. Why you would do that, I don't know how desperate of a situation she's in, but, yeah, I think that's the story. I don't really want to know more than that because it's a thriller, and I feel like anything they tell you is gonna ruin it for you a spoiler you. yeah you didn't even show them yeah, it's nothing it's boring the it's, naked it's something that has a little metallic thing look at that that looks cool this is an arc what what does it say do not trust the liar do not go in the river and do not cross the king what is the name of the book the liar of red valley okay uh comes out in september 
Oh, so that's not a final cover yet? No. I really hope it is because it's cool. It, I like it a yeah. lot. It's different. Um, in Red Valley, California, you follow the rules if you want to stay alive. But even that's not enough to protect Sadie now that she's unexpectedly become the liar. Sadie Jamie? No. Oh. Uh, the keeper and maker of Red Valley's many secrets. In a town like this, friendships are hard won and bad blood last generations. And when not, when not everyone in town is exactly human, it isn't a safe place to make enemies. And though the liar has power, power to remake the world with just a little blood, what Sadie really needs is answers. Why is the town sheriff after her? What does the king want from her? And what is the real purpose of the liar of the Red Valley? American Gothic novel, blah, blah, blah. I think it sounds cool. I can't wait to read it. I'm really excited for this book, Iron Widow. This book comes out in September, um, and it was sent to me by Penguin. It says, Pacific Rim meets The Handmaid's Tale. The boys of... Ooh. <laughs> the boys of... Hoaxia... Uh, Dream of pairing up with the girls to pilot chrysalises. Giant transforming robots that can battle the mecha aliens that lurk beneath the Great Wall of China. It doesn't matter that the girls often die from the mental strain. When 18-year-old Zedian offers herself up as a concubine pilot, it's to assassinate the ace male pilot responsible for her sister's death. But she gets her vengeance, vengeance in a way nobody expected. She kills him through the psychic link between pilots. I don't, I don't want to know anymore. It's like... Here's the story. Don't read it. Yeah, I, I. but it sounds cool. Like, it's different. You don't get many stories like this. It sounds exactly like Pacific Rim <laughs> slash... <laughs> Handmaid's Tale? Hand, oh, Handmaid. I guess. Did you read this book? <laughs> yes, I did. This is book three of The War of Broken Mirrors by Andrew Rowe. Do you want to talk about it? You can't really say much. It's book three. So it sets up Karis for sufficiently advanced magic. You already read this. And I you already didn't love it, but it's necessary. I didn't, sort of. To I get didn't the full hate story. it, but I, I, as from the from the very beginning of the Mirror series, I have not liked them as much as I, I love sufficiently advanced magic in that series. This series is a different take. On the st storytelling, he, he writes it differently. He mm -hmm. writes it more from, like, different characters' points of views, um, which is kind of, like, what I don't like about it because it's, like, I'm jumping around these people, and, like you said, some of them have different nicknames and different people call them different things, and sometimes I get lost. Maybe I'm just a little too dumb for this type of type <laughs> of book, but I get lost, and it's, like, one of those books I got to, like, read it again because the first time around, you, you, you get what's they happening. They literally have, like, three names per person. And then at the end... Like, honestly, when I read this one, throughout the whole thing, there are two characters that I still don't know who <laughs> they are. I'm just like, I remember both of those names, but which one was this one and which one was that one? Or are I thought they were the same person. Like, at some point, I did think they were the same per person. They changed points of view. And I'm like, how did she get there? And I'm like, wait, are they calling her something different now? <laughs> wait, who is she? I'm so, I thought that was her. I just her. noticed this hand. Yeah. For the it's first like a, side. He's like a puppet master. Hmm. Oh, I beat you up. I'm sorry. <laughs> but like, these books are dense. Like, yeah. this, is a, this is a thick, heavy book, um, which is always nice. And it's a full, full page Right? It's not like big old no, borders. they're long. What's next, baby? The Black Tongue Thief. The Blackstone Pirates? No, not Bandits? At all. The Blackstone Bandits? Um, this book, I think it just came out. Oh, so Black I... Tongue? That sounds dangerous. Yeah. I, I got this sent to me from Tor. I like the color. The yellow and the black looks good. Oh, shoot. There's a bookmark in it. Oh, shoot. Our 10,000 sons have declared against you their tongues are as black as their promise is true and they're coming whatever you do ah that's a threat you just got that in you just got that in the memo an email memo and they and you're now you should be freaked out <laughs> you should be like oh no ten thousand sons are coming after me with their black tongues kinch owns no kinch 
owes the Takers Guild a small fortune for his education as a thief, which includes but is not limited to lockpicking, knife fighting, wall scaling, fall breaking, lie weaving, and trap making, plus a few other small magics. His debt has driven him to lie in wait by the old forest road, waiting to rob the next traveler who crosses his path. But today, Kinch has picked the wrong mark. Galva is a knight, a survivor of the brutal goblin wars and handmaiden of the goddess of death. She's searching for her queen, missing since a distant northern city fell to giants. Unsuccessful in his robbery, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to know anymore. Sounds cool. It seems so complicated. It's, no, it doesn't. Can, it's like a guy that owes the guild something, so he's going to rob this lady, and he fails at it. I don't think it sounds complicated. I, I want to like read the back of like sufficiently advanced magic. Or and see how complicated. I want to see how complicated it is because that is a complicated series. There's a lot going on in those worlds, but I feel like I, don't I know. really don't feel like this was complicated at all. Sounds cool. There's just, goblins. There's like rogue stuff. Wait, there are goblins. Yeah, or giants. Okay, giants and goblins are almost opposites on the scale of monsters. Galva is a knight, a survivor of the brutal goblin wars and handmaiden, handmaiden of the goddess of death. She, her city, or no wait. So, okay, so now she's a hand. She is searching for her queen, missing since a distant northern city fell to giants. Okay, so now there's a kingdom. She's She has a queen, but she's also the whatever handmaiden. of some goddess. And then there was a goblin war. Does that mean that, that they fought goblins or that's just what they called it because it was located on goblins? I don't know. You've got to read it to figure out, from that dude. other book. Was it located in that goblin town? Oh, my Is God. Is that why it's called the war because they were trying to take over goblin? You see what I'm saying? There's a lot involved here. I'm getting book dust throat. I don't care. I was also sent this. I want to read Becky Chambers' books because I hear they're pretty darn good and I've never read any of them, and they sent this to me. It's called The Galaxy and the Ground Within. I don't think you have to read them in any, any particular it order. It looks like that other one. I don't know. Um, the one that was like a, a space opera one that you read. You said you liked it. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember the name. Um. Let me know if you have to read these in any particular order. I don't think you do. With no water, no air, and no native life, the planet Gora is unremarkable. The only thing it has going for it is a chance proximity to more popular worlds, making it a decent stopover for ships traveling between the wormholes that keep the galactic commons connected. If deep space is a highway, Gora is your average truck stop. At the five hop one stop, long haul spacers can stretch their legs, if they have legs that is, and get fuel, transit permits, and assorted supplies. The five hop is run by an enterprising alien and her sometimes helpful child who work hard to provide a little piece of home to everyone passing through. When a freak technological failure halts all traffic to and from Gora, three strangers, all different species with different aims, are thrown together at the five hop. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to know anymore. I don't know. I hear her books are pretty cool, and I've never actually sat down to read any of them. This is the only one I own, so let me know if I can read it. Oh, that looks terrible. I got this sent to me. Oh, So they God. asked me if I wanted all three books. And you said, no, thank and you. And I already own the first two, so they sent me the third one for free. Um, Did you read the other two? I have not yet. Of course not. <laughs> but it's the, oh, God, what is it called? It's called, don't read this book. No, this boring. shut up. And it's probably a lovey dovey. Oh, it's totally a romance. R romancy wancy, get out of my pantsy book. Geekerella is the first one, and then there's a second one. I can't remember the name of. This is the third one. Uh, Bookish and the Beast. What? A tale as old as time. What is it called? What are these dad joke books? <laughs> Rosie Thorne is feeling stuck on her college application essays in her small town and on that mysterious General Sand cosplayer she met at Excelsicon. Most of all, she's stuck in her grief over her mother's it's death. It's like Excelsior, you know, like, uh, yeah. Her only solace was her late mother's library of rare Starfield novels, but even that disappeared when they sold it to pay off hospital bills. On the other hand, Vance Rains has been Hollywood royalty for as long as he can remember, with all the privilege and scrutiny that entails. When a tabloid scandal catches up to him, he's forced to hide out somewhere the paparazzi would never expect to find him. Small town USA. So obviously they meet up. There's a romancy schmancy, and it's awesome. I love and cute then they, romances And like then this. they kiss. Yeah. 
That's how kissing works. Is it? Yeah, you go like this. Is that why you're so great at it? What? Then I got another romancy. They sent me this one. Stop it with these books. Why do you save these for the end? Get them out of the way in the beginning so I'm excited up toward the end. Because now I'm like coming down. I was like all the way up here at the beginning. I, I, I started losing energy. I came back with a little bit of some books I like. And now I'm like down here. I was sent this uh, by Gallery Books. So thank you. It's a romance. It's a famous romance author. And I wanted to read it. It's called The Soulmate Equation. Wanted to. I'd still want to read it. Single mom Jessica Davis is a data and statistics wizard. All right. And no amount of number crunching can convince her to step back into the dating world. Raised by her grandparents, who now help raise her seven-year-old daughter, Juno, Jess has been left behind too often to feel comfortable letting anyone in. After all, her father was never around, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Jess then hears about a genetically, or no, hears about genetic alley, a buzzy new DNA-based matchmaking company that's predicted to change dating forever. Finding a soulmate through DNA, the reliability of numbers, this Jess understands. At least she thought she did until her test showed an unheard of 98% compatibility with another subject in the database. Did you La, say her da, name da. was Jamie? Jess. There better be a Jamie. I'm going to be very upset if there's no more Jamie. Sounds cool. It mixes science, which I like, with romance books, which I like. So It doesn't go here. It's bigger cover. It go here. Then from Book of the Month, I got Malibu Rising. I also got... Daisy Jones and the Six by this author. I have her Daisy first Daisy Jones, do, 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 Daisy, almost. I have now all of her books, and I haven't read any of them, so that's great. Um, I'm going to wait to read this one until I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because this is kind of not really a sequel, but characters from that are in this. Mm. Um, I really, this synopsis, I'm not even going to read it. It's so non-information giving what was the word i'm thinking of non it doesn't tell you what happens basically. i think non-information giving yeah. is, is like perfect. you really don't know what it. what's going on but i know it follows like the family of one of evelyn hugo's husbands or something or other um and supposedly she's like the best writer on the planet um according so, to a lot of people quick question um oh wait you still got that you gotta finish well, this that is one? the same author all right but this one is, um, it was the book of the year for 2019 for book of the month. Daisy is a girl coming of age in LA in the late sixties, sneaking into clubs on the sunset strip, sleeping with rock stars and dreaming of singing at the whiskey a go, go. So I believe this is told in interview style. Oh, I like that. It is. And I hear it's really freaking good, but it's basically okay. from what I understand a band from like the sixties and seventies, probably the seventies that broke up. And I could be just butchering the story. And then um, you're trying to piece together what happened through these interviews, like what happened with the band. Okay. But I hear it's really freaking well done and really good. So I'm pretty excited to read it. And I like interview style. And I hear the audiobook is really good. What were you going to say? The book that Carry On, that the author that wrote Carry On. Yeah, Rainbow Rowell. The book that the character wrote it in, because it's a fanfic from another book. Oh, Fangirl. Is that a good book? I don't know. I never read it. I have it. Okay. Do people like it? Yeah. Do they it's like it? Though. It's not fantasy. Do they like it for like the woke reasons that sometimes people like books, or <laughs> do they no like idea. it for real reasons? I like it's no a idea. good book. You like, guys tell me. Do you like Fangirl, and if so, why? Like Carry On, people like it because it's woke, but I like it because it's a good freaking book. Yeah, it's awesome. So like, the, I want to know if it's more. You didn't of, even know why it's. I know. Yeah. I, that's what I love about it, and I'm so happy that you didn't tell me that people liked it because of those reasons. Yeah. Because that made me like not go in like, oh great, it's gonna be another one of these books, um, and I freaking loved it, and it's it's great. I got. The Time of Contempt, The Witcher. Fourth? Third. Third. No. I didn't read this yet. You've read three, right? Yeah. So that's four. <laughs> After three comes four. I didn't read this yet, but this is book four. I finished Blood of Elves. I really loved it, and I've been only buying these as I finished the previous I'm one. I'm so proud of you for that. Thanks, Good job. Nick. 
So this is book four. This is the next one I have to read. It makes it more rewarding and, and probably makes you want to read it more because you're like, you don't already have them. Because you know, like when you already have them, you're like, I'll just get around to it yeah. eventually. You know, this way it's like a reason to to like finish this book so I can buy the next one. Like, I think that's a much better, more responsible way to be, which is not what you guys want to hear, I'm sure, because you guys love buying books. I mean, I do too. Like, I'm guilty. But these yeah, I have you're been part of the you guys. I know. You're I've been good with group. these though, and I've only been buying them as I read them. Um, and I, I just love this series so far. Tell them how I am about buying something. Oh my god! Tell He's them the worst. Just give them a little a little treat of. He'll how keep I am. it like in the Amazon cart for like a year, two or three days. Then it'll go to a wish list for like a year, and then it's like back in the Amazon cart. And then when you finally give me list. permission to buy it, I'm like, no, I shouldn't do, do it. Do I like really like, need it? Should I? Should I? It's, it's like, like twenty dollars. I feel like if I it's buy it, it's like the end it, of the world if I, I buy I it. I may not use it as much as I think I am. So maybe I shouldn't buy Even it. the littlest things, like even something like $5, he'll like, think, I guess we kind of need that though because I'm too compulsive with stuff like that. I'm like five bucks bought and you're a little more responsible. Yeah, and then you always like, Whenever I finally buy something, the next week I hear about it because I'm like, Mick, you, we, you can't spend that much money. I'm sorry. And you're like, you always buy stuff. I'm like, no, I freaking don't. Like, you know, I don't always buy stuff. I, I, I. Yeah, the problem is, is like, I'll buy a lot of no, little things. that's not the problem. It, it, yeah. You buy a lot of little things, but you also buy expensive things nah, too. Nah, not like bowl, you. You're, bowl, bowl. That is bowl. The one time you buy something, it's like. Three hundred dollars, and when I buy stuff, it's like five dollars, twenty dollars every $10. day. Yeah, but that's in one car. They probably both it's, add up it's to the $5, same amount. Five dollars, ten. No, they don't. You you beat me every single time. Get out of here. Get out of here, dude. Anyway, get out of here. Uh, this is an arc that I got, but I believe it's on sale now, so you can buy it. And that's she who became the sun. Ooh. And I, I've mm. heard it's. Mm. Sourcing. Mm, so sourcing. I hear it's really good, and uh, I want to read it a lot. And where's the synopsis? Mm, I don't know. Self sourcing. What the heck? Mulan meets the Song of Achilles in a bold. Oh no, the Song of Achilles. We haven't read that yet. It's gonna get spoiled for us. Yeah. A lyrical reimagining of the rise of the founding emperor of the Ming dynasty from an amazing new voice in literary fantasy. To possess the mandate of heaven, the female monk Zhu will do anything. I refuse to be nothing in a fam famine-stricken village on a dusty yellow plain. Two children are given two fates. A boy, greatness, and a girl, nothingness. In 1345, China li uh, lies under harsh Mongol rule. For the starving peasants of the Central Plains, greatness is something found only in stories. When the Zhu family's eighth-born son uh, is given a fate of greatness, everyone is mystified as to how it will come to pass. Uh, it's a long synopsis. He's falling asleep. Does it? Does it look like I have a like a mullet? A little bit. Look at that. <laughs> um, but I hear it's really freaking good. So I where'd the book go? Soon. Right there. Oh, I got. This one on Book of the Month, A Nearly Normal Family, because it sounded pretty dope. Um, Stella stands accused of the brutal murder of a man almost 15 years her senior. She's an ordinary teenager from an upstanding local family. What reason could she have to kill him? Nope. What reason would she have to know a shady businessman, let alone to kill him? Stella's father, a pastor, and mother, a criminal defense attorney, find their moral compasses tested as they defend their daughter while struggling to understand why she is a suspect. Told in an unusual three-part structure, a nearly normal family asks the questions, how well do you know your own children and how far would you go to protect them? I hear this story is just like written really cool and it, the story was good. The term is really coolly. Just no, kidding. I don't think it's so. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Um, I was set this set set sent this comic full tilt boogie. Ooh, I like the rabbit. It guy. just seems cool. Is and, it a um, rabbit dog? Is that a rabbit dog? It looks like a rabbit dog. Saga meets Avatar: The Last Airbender. Aren't they the ones that like always combine the animals? Avatar. Uh yeah, they do. You're right. T. The character's name is T, by the way. Nice. T-E-E. -E. 
Her grandmother and her cat are wannabe bounty hunters, odd jobbing across the galaxy in their ship a full tilt boogie. Oh, that, no, the ship is called that. Yeah. Constantly on the lookout for the bigger, better payday. But when they break a narcissist prince out of jail, they accidentally spark an intergalactic war. Suddenly, T finds herself chased across the universe by sacred kingdom, or, sacred knights, excuse me, <laughs> kingdoms, and unstoppable undead warriors. I don't want to know more. It seems cool. And I like the artwork. Yeah, let's find something. In the beginning? No, just some random stuff. Looks pretty good. Yeah, they asked me if I wanted this, and I said yes, because it sounded pretty cool. Yeah, I wish more comics were like this. Like, just a little bit more substantial, you know? These are more expensive, though. That's the only downside. You know, if you're buying, like, a regular paper comic, this is more of, like, a cardstock, like, thicker paper. Um, the regular ones are a couple bucks, you know? These yeah, are they're like cheap. Like, ten bucks. <gasps> I forgot we have a puzzle. Oh, we do? It's downstairs. Go get it. I was sent this book. It comes out in August. The Family Plot. Is it like the Family Plot? Like, I, I actually, I don't know if they're spelled the same. But yes. is it, it is like plot, like the location? Yes. Like in a cemetery? Yes. Okay. And also like plotting. I don't know why. I wish every word that was pronounced the same was just spelled the same. And we just used... Like logic to know what we were talking about. In this situation, it would be a little confusing. You mean but you wish they were spelled differently? No, I wish they were all just spelled the same. Oh, I just see. What you always mean. spell the words the same. So you same. don't have to wonder about so how to spell something. Exactly. <laughs> and you shouldn't be stupid enough to like if I say like, "Hey, um, this is a play on words, though it could be." Ex okay, that's my that's yes yes. But if there was another sentence there, you would know exactly what it is. So intent should be derived from the what the person is saying. Let's and see. we shouldn't be stupid enough to not understand that. But apparently the American language and possibly the English language as well, we're just so dumb that we got to make sure, hey, let's make sure we write it the right way. Even though when we speak, we don't do that when we speak, but we're all smart enough to figure it out. Rant over, moving on. They love true crime until they're at the center of one. At 26, Dahlia remains haunted by her upbringing. Raised in a secluded island mansion deep in the woods and kept isolated by her true crime-obsessed parents, she's been unable to move beyond the disappearance of her twin brother Andy when they were 16. After several years away and following her father's death, Dahlia returns to the house where the family soon makes a gruesome discovery. Buried in their father's plot is another body, Andy's. His skull split open with an axe. I don't want to know more. Sounds cool. There's the first chapter. Yeah. You don't have to read it now. Ooh, okay. I'm going to start doing that. I'm going to start skipping the first chapter of every book that I read this in the episode. That's not a thing. Um, uh, I, I'm you making it do. a thing. This book is enormous. Oh, we're going to my book now. Yeah. So we just spoke about the third book in that. This is the third book in... Um, the third book in the Mirror series by Andrew Rowe. This isn't. The this other is one. the third book in these um, Arcane, Arcane Ascension. Ascension. Who read it and who's talking about their goddamn book? Me, this guy, I am. All right? Give me some space here. You've talked about every other book. Give me one book that I could talk about, please. Maybe two occasionally. What's it called? Um, it's called. The Torch That Ignites the, the stars. stars. Yeah, I always forget because that's a long name. and They're all long. Yeah. Not Sufficiently really, Advanced but. Magic isn't long. On the Shoulders of Titans is pretty long. The I other, do. the Mirror ones, I never remember their names. Um, uh, Six Sacred Swords is another one. Anyway, there's three series going on right now from him that are in the same universe. So, or same world. Um, this is the third book. Same it timeline, was, really. It was a little... Yeah, it was a little like fillery. Um, there weren't a lot of stakes in this one. Um, I felt like there was a conclusion. This is the final one. Like in hell this, no, it's not a trilogy. No, oh, not even close. And I would say that the other book is kind of like the beginning of the timeline, and then like this is the middle. Maybe no, I mean, the other one's probably the middle. Anywho, yeah, I would say I would say six it's sacred swords. Six sacred swords is the middle. Uh, because it's a character in this right here. And the second book starts telling the story for Six Sacred Swords. And then he tells another story. And then this book starts. And then maybe at some point he'll tell some more stories. Uh, but he's also a part of the first 
series, which is the Mirror series. But this one was a little bit more, like I said, less stakes, but you learn a lot of information. There's a lot of data, information dump, and, and exposition in this. Um, but it's very, if you like, like, Dungeons and Dragons, there are, the, those are my favorite parts about the books, is, like, when they go to, like, kind of, like, a dungeon, and they have to, like, figure out the puzzles and the things, and, and like, how do they get to the next level? There's these spires that, like, if you climb the spire, you get a boon of some kind. The further you get, you know, you get experience, obviously. It does have, like, some sort of RPG elements and stuff and mana and, and special abilities and all that stuff. It's very fantasy. Game lit. It's, ga- it's gamey. Um, and there is mana and all. And, like, it's just, it's it's a great series. I can't really talk about the plot of this one too much. Um this but is heavy. it's one of my favorite. It, look, I mean, this one is not that thick. Okay. It's like the paper they use, though. It's thick, but also dense. Yeah, it's like 550 pages. Yeah. Well, not really. Oh, they have pictures in that? They always had those. Oh, my God. I've never seen that. 500 pages. It's Carnelian, Shaper Attunement, Summoner Attunement. Oh, cool. You'll have to look through them. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. Let me show um, you the cool <clears throat> picture. Look at that. Cool. Cool. You know who these, this guy is? No. I need to reread he's these. A, he's a black stone bandit. These books are like so much information. Yeah, um, and you don't like them as much as I do. I don't. Uh, they're good, but I, don't, I definitely don't like them as much as you. That's true. It was like my first book series that I read that was like lit-ish. Lit RPG. And you're like, this is a genre? And I was like, yeah. And you were like, and you knew this? And you have it my whole life. (laughs) We did that whole thing. Yeah. That was the thing. Oh, another banger, baby. I want to talk about this one, too. Uh, This book was great. I'm so glad I got it from Book of the Month. I ordered this. Um, This is my, the best, I, I, this is a game, a game of the year contender. All right. This is in the, in the, in the running. For a book of the year, for me, at least. Me too, obviously. It's the only book I've given a star to this year. It's um, amazing. Yeah, so you you really shouldn't know anything about it besides yeah. um, it's it's a, it's about space. A guy going off into space to save the world, and yeah. you don't know why, and you're figuring out why he has to save the world, and you're finding out. Just uh, that's it. Just yeah. stop talking. You're bad at you're bad at giving synapses. You're just as bad as the back of the book. Uh, which this book is great because it has nothing. Uh, but yeah, it's sci-fi. It's one of our favorite books of all time, I would say, for me at least. Um, and it's based on possible reality. So it's it's very scientific. We haven't mentioned that it is Andrew Weir, which is the author of The Martian. Andy. And I don't know if they call him Andrew. I just have I Andrew just Rowe. I have Andrew Rowe in my in Oh, my, no, in Andy my Weir. Whatever. Um, same thing. I'm going to call him Andrew. Um, he is the, the author Martian. of The Martian, which The Martian we liked. It wasn't as good as this, though. This is much better, in my opinion. Um, I ordered his second book through Book of the Month, um, Artemis, but I haven't gotten it in yet. No, I did. I lied. It's downstairs. Blood of Elves. So this is. Why didn't you do these in I, order, you dummy? I thought I already hauled this. <laughs> I think you did. And then I realized it was back no, there. You didn't haul no. it. You did. Uh, we, I read it. You read it. So we did it in the book. Yeah. Wrap up. So we already talked about The Witcher. I love The Witcher. I loved this book. The end. You just like Henry Cavill. Uh, how does he have to do with the books? Um, what does he have to do with the books? He is the books. Oh. Then I got this from Book of the Month, Ariadne. Um, it was one of their selections for May. That's how, I mean, that's not too bad for not having done a book haul. Princess of something or other grows up greeting the dawn from her beautiful dancing floor and listening to her nursemaid's stories of gods and heroes. But beneath her golden palace echo the ever-present hoofbeats of her brother, the Minotaur, a monster who demands blood sacrifice. When Theseus, the prince of Athens, arrives to vanquish the beast, Ariadne sees in his green eyes not a threat but an escape. Defying the gods, betraying her family and country, and risking everything for love, she helps Theseus kill the Minotaur. But will Ariadne's decision ensure her a happy ending? Blah, blah, blah.
Okay, so I was just forced to do a puzzle. I love jigsaw puzzles. It's like puzzles. the worst the worst time of my life. So as you saw, we got this book, Mother May I. Um, they, the publisher sent it to me and part of like the publishing PR package, it had a puzzle. And I love puzzles. So it was really hard though because that was a really crappy quality puzzle. No offense, but... I mean, it's... It's it, a, it, you get a, it's a free puzzle. That's I mean. how they are. I mean, that's that's how like all the PR stuff is. It's just yeah. like it's gimmicky stuff, you know. But it was still a puzzle. It's fun. And you I mean? And you saw like there's a thing on the back, like a little note on the back. Um, it was cool. It was a cool thing. I wish more publishers did stuff like that because it's interactive and like you had to actually put it together. It was like a 200 piece puzzle. But anyway, it was really cool. Um, Took us 40 200. Minutes. Too long. <laughs> Growing up poor in rural, rural Georgia. <laughs> I can't say that word. Rural. Rural. Brie Cabot was warned by her single mother that the world is a dark and scary place. Brie rejected her mother's fear, fearful outlook and life has proved her right. Having married into a family with wealth, power, and connections, Brie now has all a woman could ever dream of. A loving lawyer, husband, two talented teenage daughters, a new baby boy, a gorgeous home, and every opportunity in the world. Until the day she awakens to s and sees a witch peering into her bedroom window. An old, gray-haired woman dressed all in black who vanishes as quickly as she appears. It must have been a play, blah, blah, blah. She spies the old woman again later. I mean, this is giving me the whole plot. She loses her baby, basically, and has to get him back. Um... It, it was giving way too much information. Yeah, seriously. But it seems really interesting. I'm I'm pretty excited, and I think that PR package was dope. So awesome job. Um, I then got this sent to me, Daughter of Sparta. Did I hit you? You. You like crumbed on me. <laughs> uh, I got this sent to me a little while ago. I think the book is the book is out now. Ew. I like that color. That, nice, that red is nice. Sparta forged her into a deadly weapon. Now the gods need her to save the world. Daphne spent her entire life honing her body and mind into that of a warrior, hoping to be accepted by the unyielding people of ancient Sparta. But an unexpected encounter with the goddess Artemis, who holds Daphne's brother's fate in her hands, upends her life she's worked so hard to build. Nine mysterious items have been stolen from Mount Olympus, and if Daphne cannot find them, the god's waning powers will fade away. The mortal world will descend into chaos, and her brother's life will be forfeit. So it's like a collectum mission. Oh, like a journey to the west. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of cool. I dig it. And then I got this really cool journal sent to me. Um, I haven't decided yet what my quest is going to be. But I got the Heroes Journal, um, Give Your Goal a Quest. I picked out the purple one when they asked me which one I wanted because I love purple. I have that. And basically, you get a little story in the beginning. And you get to color in this journal. Like throughout the whole journal. But it gets kind of redundant because a lot of the pages are the same. But basically, there's like a little story in the beginning, and you create like a quest, and it's a way to like meet your goals. Gamify. Yeah, gamify like your goals in life. So you read the story. Is a life goal thing, or is it a reading goal thing? No, it's a life thing. Like, or uh, do whatever goal you want. Okay. Um, I wanted it, to use it for YouTube. We will. But because I don't know how I would use it for somebody books. was like, no, I want to use it for my thing. Dude, it's it, got a lot it, of it. stuff. Like it, it goes. And guess into how long it's been sitting on the at the kitchen counter waiting months. for somebody to start using it. But it gives you a lot of information. Um, and then this is basically like each day, or I think it's each day. Yeah. You have, like, today's allies, so things that are going to help you with your goals. Today's threats, things keeping you away from your goals. You have, like, a tracker, like, an area that you can put, like, your, you know, track your goals. And basically that same pattern goes for a while. And, like, the, the pictures in themselves, like, change over time, but it takes a while for them to change. I can't really see it. I just thought it was a cool I concept. I mean, you can't see it because you're holding the, the, the thing like in the other room. 
So you can see some of the pages here. So what kind of goal do you want to make? I want to make a goal that's not on the this video. And also, I want to make a goal to get pizza today. Like I've asked you like 10 <laughs> times if you if you order pizza already. This is my last thing to haul. I think it's really cool. It's a I, cool book. It's a cool idea. It just sucks that you're not going to use it. I'll use it. We're going to use it for... It's also Probably it's YouTube. also like super pretty, so it's like, do I want to write on it? You of course you want to write on because it because I want to. I don't want to ruin it, so it's like I just want to. You're keep supposed it. to color it. There's so many cool places to color. Mm -hmm. This is your quest. It's a cool idea, and I I saw it on YouTube. No, not YouTube. Instagram. Um, Instagram. And I was like, hey, that's really cool. Let me reach out to them, and they were kind enough to send me one. So we have to figure out what our goal is going to be, but we're going to start filling this out. Um, I think that's it for my book haul. It only took a Eight million years. hours. I mean, yeah. This is why we have to start doing them more often. We, like, keep putting it off. We're like, no, I don't want to do it now. No, I don't want to do it. I, I feel like you're blaming me for this. I am. And then finally, we're like, oh, I have 8 million books now. We should have done it earlier. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. If you stay tuned this far... I would like you to make a comment. Oh my god, we haven't done this in a That's while. That's what I said at the beginning of the video. If you recall, oh, I was like, I'm going to wait till the end of the video oh. to say this. Because I noticed we haven't done this in a while. So, do you have a word for me? Beast. Ooh, beastie. Um, yeah, so include that in your comment and we'll know that you stuck in there for this and extremely cool. long video. And... Um, that's, That's it, it for that. Yeah. So if you guys want to support the channel, make sure to check out the Patreon. You could join as a member as well now. Um, if you get if you join Patreon, you can join the Discord. And they do a lot of book stuff on there. If you're watching this and you stay tuned this, this long, you're probably already part of the Patreon, to be honest. You know, uh, make sure to like the video and uh, subscribe if you haven't already. We do these book hauls every once in a while when we obviously get a lot of books and just get backed up. Um, honestly, this isn't a lot. It's not as bad as This is as a it, smaller haul. Yeah, and it still sure. took us a long time. We just talked about the books a lot more yeah. this time, you know. But uh, we need to, I want to, my goal, one of my goals is to start doing these book hauls monthly. So mm, let me yeah. know if that's something you would enjoy. Like, do you like the bigger hauls and just us waiting and suffering? Or would you rather us put out like slightly smaller hauls each month? Yeah, like let me know. Like a thirty book haul or like a twenty book this haul. This is like thirty. It is. It would be probably like ten a month or so. I don't even think I buy that many books each month. This is thirty. That's total is forty eight. Oh, that's pretty big still. Yeah. So this is thirty right in front of us here. So this would be thirty books. It it would probably be like ten to fifteen books a month. I would doubt that many. Maybe ten. Maybe. So. <laughs> Let's order pizza. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Mick, you got to make sure you say bye. Bye. Uh, bye, bye, bye.